when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Yes, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Yes, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Oh, I praise God for saving me. I praise God for saving me. Yes, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I praise God for saving me. Oh, I praise God for saving me. Oh, I praise God for saving me. Yes, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I praise God for saving me. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. Good morning, Mother Home. Good morning, Sister Robinson. God bless you. It's so great to see you on prayer this morning. Good morning, Sister Pant. Good morning, um, Sister Frederick. God bless you, Missionary Johnson. Good morning, Katrina. Pray you had a wonderful birthday yesterday. God bless you, Miriam. God bless you, Sister Vincent. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Morris. God bless you. And we are praying with you and the Refuge Temple family. God bless you, Sister Moya. God bless you, Sister Mamie. God bless you, Sister Margaret. Good morning, Keisha. God bless you. Good morning. Brother Wardlaw, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Hedrick. God bless you, Sister Frederick. Good morning, Marlette. Good morning, Mother Saunders. God bless you, Elder Mott. Good morning, Mother Morris. God bless you, Thomasina. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Jan. Good morning, Sister Kimberly. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Petlar. Good morning, Mother Street. Good morning, Deacon Davis. God bless you, and Mother Davis. Good morning, Sister Bailey. God bless you. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Sister Glean. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Hadley, good morning. Sister Booker, praise God for you, Tiana. God bless you. Good morning to you. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Davis. God bless you and Deacon Davis. Good morning, Sister Cheek. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Purvis. God bless you, Lady Staten. Good morning, Mother Jill. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, Sister Sylvia. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Praise the Lord, Sister Sister Joanne, praise God for you. Thank God for him touching your body, praying for you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Blue, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Mother McCall. Good morning. God bless you. Sister Charlotte, God bless you. And good morning. Good morning, Sister Roberts. Good morning, Mother Helen. Praying for you. Praying you're feeling better. God bless you. Good morning. Well, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness and see the manifestation of God through prayer. God touching people's lives through prayer. I'm just so elated when I'm able to read the praise reports of people from all over the world whose lives are being changed and impacted through prayer, prayer seeking God. We just left a phenomenal revival in Oxford, North Carolina. You can check the Refuge Temple page and my page for the services, but how God blessed us Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Souls reaching out at the altar, souls being delivered, souls being reclaimed, being restored, being revived. People, hallelujah, healed and touched and moved by the presence of God. And it's all a function 
of prayer. When we pray, God does things in our midst. When we pray, God heals, God delivers. I was reading a testimony of a dear friend of mine of how literally he says that prayer has saved his life, that when he thought things were going under for the third time, God used prayer as a means of bringing him to Christ, bringing him back into fellowship, strengthening him, increasing his life, just doing what needs to be done because we're praying. So as always, if you have a prayer request, if you're on Facebook, place it in the chat or inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on the Instagram and you have a prayer request, you can place it in the comment section or you can direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD. And if you are on YouTube or if you're on the conference call or anybody can text your prayer request to 336-567-5358. 8 3365675358 you can text your prayer request and we are taking those before the lord believing god with you for what we know god is able excuse me god is able to do we're texting and believing god for your request for god to save deliver to heal and to make hope for god to do what we know he is indeed able to do i want to go back to the book of first Peter. And I want to go back to chapter two, the closing verses of that particular text. First Peter chapter two, and I want to read, I want to read verse 18 through 25. 18 through 25. The Bible says, servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your own faults? Ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto ye are called, because Christ have suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was any guile found in his mouth, who when he had was reviled, rather reviled not again, when he suffered he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged, judgeth righteously. Who shall bear his own sins in his own body on the tree? That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For we, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now turned into the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And I want to continue the thought we started yesterday. Suffering like Jesus. Suffering like Jesus. This is a topic that I think the church struggles with confronting in this day and age. In this day and age, we have very much the um, mentality of blessings, favor, glory, God doing this, doing that, doing the other for us. And I believe that God works miracles. In fact, I've seen him work miracles. I've seen miracles wrought through the hand of God, through the power of God, through the prayers of the righteous. At the same time, I am cognizant of the reality that we do indeed suffer. We do indeed suffer. We suffer difficulty and hardship and pain. And sometimes we suffer at the hands of people. I'm sure most of us most of us have experienced um, someone who treated us cruelly, someone who treated us badly, someone who um, showed us disrespect, someone who was unkind to us, someone who in some way caused us to suffer pain. For so many of us, our pain has a name, a person, person who did something to us that caused us to experience um, hardship, difficulty. 
And how do you fathom that? How do you deal with someone who did you wrong? And you've got to go back and look at what the Bible says about this, because there is a natural way or a fleshly way or a carnal way that many people deal with suffering. And it's usually retaliation, meaning that if you did something to me, I'm going to do something to you. If you lied on me, then I'm going to lie on you. If you hurt me, I'm going to do something in retaliation to hurt you. And, and that's the common, that's the worldly approach. And Jesus kept in his teachings, giving us a different approach to how we deal with people who attack us, people who do things to make us feel badly, people who do things to cause us pain and suffering. In fact, he said that you've heard it said to love your um, neighbors and hate your enemies. But Jesus said to love your enemies, to bless them that curse you, to pray for them that despitefully use you. And, you know, it's a challenging thing. But Jesus said you have to pray for the people who, for whatever reason, have done something negatively towards you, have done something to hurt you, have done something to damage you. Here you hear the voice of Jesus. Here you hear the voice of Jesus saying that we need to find a different approach, not to simply do what someone has done to us, but to treat them the way we want to be treated. Guess what? Even when they aren't treating us right, that's the command of the scripture, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, even if they aren't doing it. What do you do? What do you do, saints? When people are doing you wrong, when people are treating you in an ungodly fashion, when people are causing you pain and difficulty and upheaval, that Jesus didn't say seek revenge. Jesus is teaching us to forgive. Jesus is teaching us to have mercy on them. Jesus is teaching them to turn the teaching us rather to turn the other cheek. Jesus is teaching us to go the second mile if they compel you to go one mile. Jesus is teaching us to do all kinds of extraordinary things things. Why? Because it brings glory back to him. It brings glory back to him. And so he makes this statement. I want to just kind of walk through here in verse 18, that we are to be good to even the masters or even the leaders or the employers or the supervisors who are not good to us. We are to be good to them. He says, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. It, it is noteworthy when you can suffer wrongfully, but do so in a spirit of godliness. I'm being treated badly. I'm being hurt by people that should be taking care of me, but yet I'm going to do it and endure grief not retaliate, not seek revenge. And he's saying you're suffering wrongfully. You didn't do anything wrong, but yet you're suffering for it. You didn't say anything wrong, but yet you're suffering for it. That is the command of God because he says, what is the glory in you suffering because you did something wrong? And you take it patiently. What, what's the glory in that? What, what is the, the benefit of that? You, 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 like I said before, if you're the employee that comes to wait to work late constantly and they dock you for your pay, you really can't say, oh, I'm suffering for Christ. No, you're not. You're suffering because you came to work late and they, and they cut your check. They cut your check because you kept coming to work late or you kept leaving early. It's called leave without pay. And they didn't pay you because you left. And so you can't say you're suffering. But if you you're enduring this because you've done nothing wrong. You haven't hurt anybody, but yet you're suffering wrong. But the Bible says we were called to this. Let me say that again. We were called to this. You say, well, Bishop, were we called to suffer? No, but we were called to be like Christ. We were called to exemplify Christ. We were called to reflect Christ in our character, our personality, our disposition, who the Bible says who did no sin who did no sin and we were called because Christ also suffered and he left us the example. 
He left us the example. I came to remind us to look at what Jesus did in his passion, in his suffering, oh God, so that we could be saved, in his degradation. Think about what they did when they finally arrested Jesus. The Bible says they slapped him across the face and they slapped him again and they pulled the, the hairs out of his beard. They beat him with a scourge, which was a whip that had little metal pieces in it so that when it touched the flesh. It pulled the skin off the flesh. This is what they did before he got to the cross. They scourged him. They made him carry his cross up through the city of Jerusalem and up the cruel hill of Golgotha. They nailed his hands to the cross. They nailed his feet to the cross. And they had a device that plunged the cross into the earth so it ripped even more into the flesh. All of this they did for Jesus. But the Bible says he did not complain. The Bible says he did not retaliate. The Bible says he didn't. He, the, Jesus said he could have called 10,000 angels to deliver him and wipe out the Romans, wipe out the Pharisees, wipe out the Sadducees, but he stood there and he hung on that cross for your sins, my sins. That's the example. He's the example. And I know, and, and then as they mocked him, as they taunted him from the foot of the cross, he said his declaration was, Father, forgive. Give them, for they know not what they do. This is what Jesus endured. This is our example. And here we are, the saints of God, the people of God, the, the, the people who've been born again, seeking revenge, seeking retaliation, seeking to get back at somebody who did us harm. But yet here is the Bible telling us that Jesus suffered for us and he endured our persecution and he was our example. That means if I'm trying to to decide what to do when I'm persecuted, when I'm hurt, when I'm used, when I'm misused. The example is Jesus. The example is Jesus. He is showing us in this scripture that whatever he endured, we have to be able and willing to endure and to forgive them and to forgive them. And he prayed for them. My God, he prayed for them. The Bible, look at verse number 22, who did no sin. He did not retaliate. He did not seek revenge. Neither was there guile found in his mouth. There was nothing negative coming out of his mouth. Nothing that was subjective. Nothing that would say that anything, in, even in defense of himself, even in defense of himself, they, they, they mocked him. They reviled him and there was no guile. In other words, he was the suffering savior, the perfect lamb of God, teaching us and giving us this righteous example. And the Bible says that when he was reviled, and the word reviled means to pile up abusive and vile language against somebody. They abused him verbally. And most of us don't suffer physical suffering at the hands of people, but we endure a lot of reviling. We endure a lot of people saying stuff, saying vicious things to us, saying vicious things about us, but yet we are cautious by the scripture, oh hallelujah, to endure it. Because the Bible says when he was reviled, he reviled not again. In other words, because they said something nasty to him, he didn't come back out of his mouth nasty to them, but he, he closed his mouth. The Bible says he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. He did not respond. He did not retaliate. He did not cuss them out because they cussed him out. But the Bible says he held his peace. Something that many of us, including Pastor Davis, sometimes struggle with. You just feel like you got to say something. If you don't say something, they're going to think they got away with it. They're going to think they did it and you were just a milk toast or you were just weak. But when you have the mind of Christ, even when they say these things, you refuse to retaliate. You refuse to come back. You won't come back for reviling, for reviling. Even though he was threatened, even though he suffered rather, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. In other words, he did it as unto the Father. He did it as unto the Father. He was the obedient son, suffering, oh God, at the will of the Father, so that humanity could be saved. He did it for us.
And if he did that for us, then he has set the example because he didn't threat, threaten, but he committed himself and he bare our sins. He bore our sins. He bore our mistakes. He bore the things that we did. That saying that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Because of what he did, our lives have been transformed. Because of what he did, our lives have been made perfect. Because of what he did, our lives have been given access to the grace and the salvation of God. He died for us and that we should live unto righteousness and by his stripes were healed. By what he endured, by what he dealt with, by what he faced, we have the right to salvation and we have access to grace and we have access to healing all through Jesus Christ. Even when we went astray, look at the text, even when we went astray, but we have now returned because of salvation, a way has been made for us to return to God, to come back to him, to honor him, to live for him. We strayed, eat despite what he did. The Bible says we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, saints, we are healed. All of this possible through the suffering of Christ. And when you suffer, God uses you as a tool for his glory. When you suffer, God uses you as a tool for his glory. The same way Jesus became the access point for us to be saved, we become the representative of of Jesus Christ in the midst of our suffering so that God can be glorified, so that people can be edified. Oh, hallelujah. So the church can be can evangelize all of these things, suffering with Christ. And here's the promise. I got to close, but here's the promise. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Hey, Shataye, don't get, get it twisted. God sees what you've endured. God sees what you've gone through. God sees what you suffered. And he says, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for each of you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your mercy, your goodness, your grace, your love and your kindness. Lord, you continue to grant us favor. We awoke this morning because of your mercy and because of your grace. Lord, you kept us last night even as we traveled and brought us to this next point of our journey. And I thank you for your mercy today. I thank you for waking up. I thank you for being in my right mind. I thank you for being able to get prepared to join my brothers and sisters from all over the world. God, I thank you for each of them. I thank you for the move of God that took place in, in Oxford last week. Lord, souls coming from everywhere, people being blessed. Hey, Shanama, all throughout the service, because your glory was in our midst, oh God. And I thank you for it. Lord, leave a permanent blessing, oh God, with everybody that came to the revival. Not just a moment of celebration, of oh God, of excitement. But Lord, I want a life-changing miracle to follow everybody that was a part of that revival. God, I want you to do something for them extraordinary. I want you to open a door for them, God. I want you to bless them in such a way that they know that God, you have delivered and Lord, you have made a way. God, I'm praying for every name that's on the prayer list, every name in the chat, every name sent by messenger and text and email. God, that you would undertake for every soul. As your glory fills the prayer room, God, I'm praying for the people on the prayer list. God, remember Mother Rogers. Remember Mother Jefferson. Remember Mother Boyd, Mother Lawton. Remember Pastor Briggs today. Remember Mother Hudson right now. Remember Bishop Sylvester Reed and the Refuge Temple Church of Columbia. 
Hallelujah. God, remember the House of Faith Bible Church in New Jersey. God, remember Pastor and Lady White. Remember the Robinsons. Remember St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Trinidad, Tobago, Jamaica. My God, Grenada. Remember them, God, in a special way. Remember Sister Kimberly Clark. Remember Bula Lopez, God. Remember Duward. Remember Joshua, Jeremiah, Jurius. God, that entire blessed family. God, bless them as only you can. Remember, oh God, Sister Warren today. Mary, remember Stacy Warren. Remember Cassandra Mayo. Remember Clarence Barnes today. Gloria Barnes. God, remember, oh God, William Whitaker. Remember Gloria Whitaker. God, remember Deacon, oh God, and Sister. Hallelujah. Oh God, oh God, remember them now. Remember my God, Deacon and Mother Grace. Remember Deacon Deacon and Sister Davis today. Remember Deacon and Mother Wilson right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, remember Matt and Jill. Remember my God, Garland and Pam. Remember, oh God, people everywhere that need something from you. God, stretch out your mighty hand. Your arm is not too short that it cannot save. Your ear is open, my God, to our cry. So honor every prayer request, God, even the unspoken request. God, I want you to honor and to bless them, God, as only you're able to do. God, I'm praying for for healing for the sick today. Oh God, people that are sick in their bodies, some in the hospital. God, I thank you for touching the body of my nephew. God, continue walking him through the healing process, God. Lord, I'm praying today that you will remember Michael, that you will remember Liam Stevens today, Keith Smith, that you would look on Jody's mother today, that you would remember Miracle Destiny. God, I'm praying for Mother Lula Jenkins today. God, that you would step in and touch the body of this woman of God. Lord, because we know that you're able. Lord, don't withhold your healing virtue, but God, touch her now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the sick everywhere. God, we pray for Bishop Alfonso Brooks. We pray, hallelujah, for Mother Shirley Clark. We pray for Mother Evangeline Jenkins today. We pray for Lady Andrea Maxwell. God, we're praying, oh God, for Brother Wiggins today. We're praying for Brother and Sister Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland, God. Lord, stretch out your hand. Remember, my God, Dr. Hayward, Sister Hayward, Dr. Hayward, mother. Remember Mother Jill, Mother Pride, Mother Chambers, Mother Carter today. Oh God, remember Mother Moorhead God, in the name of Jesus. God, remember Margie. In a special way, God, bring your healing virtue oh God, upon them. Lord, remember oh God, Pastor Carr, Minister Carr. Remember Elder Tyson and Elder Smith today. Lord, I'm praying, oh God, for your healing virtue to be applied. God, remember all of these precious souls in a special way, God. In the name of Jesus, remember Mother Foster, Henry J and Brother Cliff, God. Lord, touch their bodies. Strengthen them, Lord, inside and outside. God, I'm praying today for Mother Tanaj, Mother Home, and Missionary Simmons. I'm praying today, oh God, for Catherine, Cynthia Duchess. I'm praying for Marlette. I'm praying for Maurice today. I'm praying for Tony. I'm praying for Kim. I'm praying for everybody. Oh my God, that is able, that you would touch them and heal them and deliver them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. God, I'm praying, oh God, for your hand to be upon the people today. God, I'm praying today, my God, that you would touch and heal everywhere. Everywhere there's a sick person, my God, stretch out your mighty hand. Oh God, go into every hospital. My God, the cancer ward, the COVID ward, the ICU unit. God, walk in there today. God, walk into, my God. Oh God, the dialysis unit. Walk into, oh God, into Lord God, everywhere there's a sick person. Oh God, into rehab, into nursing homes, even into hospice, God, because because we know that you're a healer. If there's anybody watching, Lord, that needs healing in their body, I'm praying for them now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would heal. God, we're praying for grieving families. Oh God, so many people are losing loved ones, but God, we're praying for them now. We're praying for your grace, your mercy, your help to be upon them. God, I'm lifting up the Hargrove family. God, remember oh God, the sons. Remember the church families got impacted by the passing of Mother Birdie Hargrove. God, I'm praying for, oh God, Yvonne today. I'm praying for Bishop Melvin Williams, oh God, and Sister Williams, God, oh God, in the loss of their son. Lord, stretch out your hand and touch them in the name of 
of Jesus Christ. God, strengthen them. Remember the Kramer family and Greater Emmanuel Temple. Remember, my God, the Fields Green family, Bishop Michael Fields, Shekinah, my God, their family, and Refuge Temple Annex and Greater Refuge Temple of Washington. God, remember, my God, Mother Harrell, the Harrell family, and the Greater Refuge Church, my God, of Plainfield. Everywhere there's a grieving heart, God. We're praying that you would step in and touch them in a special way. God, we pray for the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family, the Meadows family, the Moyer family, the Perkins family. God, we pray for the White family, for the Dockery family, every grieving family, the Hills, God, every grieving family. Remember Cynthia and the Jackson family. God, remember my God. Hallelujah, Kim and the Newkirk family. Lord, everybody everywhere that's grieving, God, strengthen them. Remember Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. Remember Margie and the McLean, Melvin, and Street family. Remember the Ransom family today. Remember Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. God, strengthen them now. Remember, my God, these precious Sean and Monique, God, and the Gary Porter family. God, touch them. Remember Trell and Ryan and the Alan Williams family. Remember, my God, Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family. God, people everywhere. God, touch them. Deliver them now. The Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, God. Lord, strengthen them. The Banks family. Lord, remember the Middletons. Remember the Taylors, God. Every grieving family everywhere. Remember the Felix family, the Zapata family. Remember the Boodrums, the Mannix, my God. Touch them, God. Remember the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherin family, God. Lord, give grace and strength everywhere. Everywhere there's a grieving heart, Lord. The Phillips family, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Josephs, everybody everywhere. God, strengthen them now. Every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every grieving child today. God, give them grace and strength. Siblings, God, remember my family, God. Remember my father. Remember my cousins today. Remember, my God, our entire family that's grieving the loss of loved ones. God, give them grace. God, remember the Austins. Remember the Adams family. Remember the Harpersons today in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for the body of Christ today. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, I pray, my God, oh my God, I pray today for Apostle and Mother Clark, Apostle, my God, and Mother May, Apostle, my God, and Sister, oh God, Parsons, Apostle, and Mother Keith today, God, strengthen them, touch them, help them now, as only you can, Bishop and Mother Terry, God, everybody, Apostle Wolfhawk, God, give grace and strength today, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying today for every Bishop and Elder, every, oh God, First Lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, every minister and deacon, every, my God, young person in the church, God, every musician, singer, and psalmist, the entire body of Christ, everybody's suffering something. Everybody's going through something, but God calls us to go through in a way that glorifies you, calls us to suffer in a way that brings positive attention to you, God, and Lord, ease the suffering and give grace for the journey that you might get the glory out of our lives. God, I'm praying for first responders, essential workers everywhere, firemen, policemen, EMTs. God, I'm praying today for school employees and students as we go back to school. God, I'm praying that you would help and strengthen and keep them under your precious blood. God, I'm praying today, God, for everybody that works to help another person. Firemen, policemen, EMTs. God, I'm praying today for clerks and nurses and those that work in stores and hospitals and rehab centers. God, cover them and protect them now. And God, bring your healing. God, bring your healing to those that have been infected. My God, even from long-term impact, God, heal them. And Lord, heal the land today because the land is so sick. All over the world, we deal with the sickness of sin, but we're trusting you, God, to heal the land of sin, of sat sat satanic influence, of violence, God, of hatred, of jealousy. Heal the land, God. Cause us to walk in your grace and to live in your power. Bless our day today. God, keep us, God, even as we travel. God, cover us with your precious blood. Keep us under your blood, God. Sustain us and guide us and keep us. And we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, join me in giving God the glory. Come on, join me and giving God the glory. That's right. Everybody praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my declaration for today. Lord, help me endure as you did. Jesus Christ is our example of how we face hardship, how we face challenges, how we face people saying things about us, doing things against us. Jesus has given us the example. He endured, and sometimes he said nothing. Sometimes he understood the greater glory that was attached to his suffering. Sometimes he simply said, Father, forgive them. But he endured, the Bible says he endured the cross. He despised the shame. You don't have to like your suffering, but you have to ask God to help you to endure your suffering. Give you the grace to stand, the power to live, the power to stand up righteously. Hallelujah. In the face of whatever we're dealing with. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. And thank you for joining and thank you for sharing it. Please, please share. The revival from last night is on the Refuge Temple page and also on my page, I believe, for Wednesday and Thursday. You can look back at the revival. God gave us some words to share with the body of Christ and it will bless you. You can also stay connected to our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hallelujah. So please be a part of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Our radio broadcast airs during the week, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Look, let me thank every single person who seed, sold, and shared with this ministry. We were planning the telethon, but because of all of these funerals, we are delaying the telethon for two weeks. It will be September the 10th. It will be September the 10th, and I'm asking asking the morning prayer family to join me in supporting the Caribbean in our telethon on September the 10th. All right, September the 10th. That's our new date. You got a little more time to ask folks to help you be a blessing to the schools and the works in the Caribbean in the name of Jesus Christ. But if you want to be a blessing today, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our cash app is dollar sign one refuge, dollar sign the number one refuge. You can also give at our website, which is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, and make your gift on the donate page. If you have the Givelify app, you can give through Givelify. Just do the search for Refuge Temple Church Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church and make your gift there. And we thank you. We thank you for what you share with this ministry, and we appreciate it so very much. So God bless you. But we are the most grateful for everybody who joins this prayer every day because this prayer is changing lives. Hallelujah. You know, when I shared my just just trying to ask people to come to prayer. And I shared the picture and shared that. We had so many shares. And with the shares, testimonies of people whose lives are being positively impacted through this prayer. This prayer is blessing somebody. So please keep coming to prayer. Keep inviting others to prayer. And please keep praying. Pray for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our children. Pray for my father. Pray for my sisters. Pray for my cousins. Oh God, as they grieve the loss of their mom. Pray for our entire family. Pray for our nieces, our nephews, in-laws, everybody in our family. Just hold us up in prayer. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another that God's grace would cover us, keep us, and shelter us. Oh, my God. The Lord bless you. The Lord cover you and sustain you. And whatever you're dealing with, God give you grace to stand. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.